Hi, everyone. Happy Hi, everybody. <laughs> hey, guys. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Caitlin. Hi, Cece. Hi, Marcia. Hi, John. Hi, Terrence. <laughs> oh, hi. Oh, Terrence, I love your background. Oh, thank you. That's really fun. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> Thanks. Hi, Marcia. Awesome. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Welcome, everyone, back to our weekly Lunch and Learns. Um, this is what, our 62nd week, which I'm so thrilled that we've done 62 of these. I can't believe it since March of last year. Um, a couple of Zoom rules for those of you who um, haven't been here for a while or just a uh, refresher, please mute yourself when you're not speaking. We recommend speaker view or presentation. Video sharing is optional, though we love to see all your smiling faces. Um, I'm so thrilled that everyone's turned on their cameras. Um, please type any questions or comments into the chat. I will be moderating it. Please feel free to ask questions. Um, we have amazing guest speakers. We will have a Q&A at the end, um, but you're also welcome to engage and, and comment. I'll be watching that chat bar for any of your comments. Um, a quick update from Autism Tree. Um, we've reached now over 624,000 people through all of our social media channels, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and so on. Um, we do all of the platforms. So thanks to everyone who's been following us on our social media. Um, our posts have been shared over 1,042 times and we posted or we have 419 videos on our YouTube channel and 364 of those videos we posted since March of last year and counting. I keep getting amazing video submissions from all of our incredible volunteer community um, to help engage our families during this time and our kids online. Um, one of those video series that we have on our YouTube channel is our Reading with Autism Tree series. We've now posted 108 videos and reached over 52,000 people. Um, that's where our volunteers read children's books for our kids. We also have an HPF at home series where you can share a hobby that you do at home um, and something that, you know, that might brighten one of our kids days. Um, we love sharing that on all of our social media platforms. Uh, we've now provided 292 virtual events to date. We're going to hit that 300 mark this year. I'm so excited. Um, we have 16 events coming up between now and the end of um, August. So, uh, oh, September. So there's still a lot to get involved in. So if you would like to um, learn more about our programs, we offer 19 of our programs, 18 are in virtual, three are now in person. We have our Bridge to the Beach program, our NCL Girls Mentor program, which is happening this Sunday, and our, um, I'm blanking on the last one, our Adaptive Dance class as well, which happens every Saturday. So if you'd like to learn more about that, feel free to reach out to me. Um, without further ado, I'll pass it off um, to our guest speakers today from Autism Speaks. We have Tracy McDonald and Jackie, um, and we're so thrilled to have them today and share more about Autism Speaks, what they offer, and go ahead and take it away. <laughs> awesome. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Jackie. I'm um, one of the managers of field development in Southern California for Autism Speaks. And also on the call is uh, Tracy McDonald. She's, a, she's our area executive director. So I'll let her say hi. Hi. <laughs> um, we um, met with Dana and Rebecca gosh, a couple months ago now, and, um, but they've been, you know, involved with Autism Speaks for a long time, um, and recently a local grant recipient, and so we were really excited to learn a lot about uh, the programs and services they have, and um, when they asked us to be here, we were really excited, so we're happy to see everyone. Um, how should I share my presentation? Just share my screen? Yes, yeah. you can go ahead awesome. and share. Mm -hmm. All right. Let me make sure I'm doing it correctly. I also downloaded it too, just in case. <laughs> that okay, looks so you guys can see my screen, right? Yes. Looks good. Probably too much of it. <laughs> just go in the presentation. Perfect. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so here are some pictures of me and Tracy. So, what we do. Um, 
in the community is really be the representative for Autism Speaks. And we'll kind of get into Autism Speaks, but um, how many, uh, you can raise your hands, how many of you are kind of familiar with Autism Speaks? Cool. Okay. So maybe we'll, for those that didn't raise their hands, you might learn something new today. Um, <laughs> So we're a local organization, but we're also we're, we're national. So our headquarters are in New York, but then we have chapters throughout the United States and um, every chapter. I think we have 13 chapters and every chapter will have some staff members, depending on how many people live in that area. Um, and then a lot of the company or a lot of the organization, our staff members work out of their houses. Um, and that's that's me and that's Tracy, especially now after um, COVID-19 and the pandemic. But here are some pictures of um, companies that we work with. So our jobs are to go out and meet corporations and donors who want to support our mission. Um, and we get to meet a lot of really cool individuals um, who want to just, you know, make an impact in the community. Here you've got like Berg Electric and they're down in San Diego. Um, we've got Ser Service Champions, they're a AC and heating company. And then in the other photo, um, Ace Hardware, who recently came on. Um, can you see everybody's face as well? I'm recorded, um, recording, so I can just see your, um, oh, your okay. face and your presentation. But if you're in gallery view, you should be able to see everybody's faces. Okay, great. Um, yeah. So, and here is um, Ace Hardware, and they did a uh, like a campaign. We do campaigns where you know when you're at the grocery store, they'll ask you if you'd like to donate to a certain organization, um, and that's one of our jobs is to to get companies to. Um, raise money however and however they'd like and that's one of the programs and and they raised twenty thousand dollars for autism speech which is really awesome um, and this is our mission in our vision here at Autism Speaks, it's dedicated to promoting solutions across the spectrum throughout the lifespan. Um, and, and we do that through a lot of different ways. Uh, we have a ton of different services. And so we're gonna kind of go over those as well. Uh, Tracy, feel free to jump in and, and cut me off whenever. <laughs> But I'm just going to go through and, and kind of go over what we do. So we have our autism response team, which I think is really awesome. And um, we've had some autism response team members in our offices, and they're always really nice to um, to talk with and just see how they're impacting families and individuals. But what it is, is um, they're trained individuals who have worked in the field, whether that's being a BCBA or so many so many different um things and backgrounds but we'll get emails um you know what we do in the field is a lot of fundraising and a lot of relationship building but autism speaks has a lot of services and so we'll get emails about families um maybe moving to a new territory moving to a new city and not knowing where to find a day a day club or a, a dentist that is um you know holding hours specifically for individuals on the spectrum, all kinds of uh, services out there. And they'll reach out and say, you know, hey, I don't know where to go. And so our autism response team is really good about helping find those and help helping find those services and pointing them in the right direction. Um, but it can also be from anywhere like, you know, I have a grandson and he's three and he just got diagnosed you know what can i do i want to be involved or what can you know where can i go to find more information because maybe they have no idea um, and so that's where our autism autism response team comes in um, they speak spanish here's their information in case you would like to reach out to them uh, young adult information all kinds of stuff um, and we also have um toolkits and so this is kind of just giving you a little bit more information about them really nice individuals on the autism response team um, and these are our toolkits and the toolkits are really helpful in 
everything, um, whether that's going to get a haircut and maybe what that would look like. Um, going to the dentist. Nobody really loves going to the dentist. At least I haven't met someone that has. Um, but here's a toolkit on what to expect and um, and you know tips and tricks. We've also got stuff about young adult uh, finances and you know what that looks like as we grow up and we have to all of a sudden be in charge of our own money. <laughs> they give you a toolkit on what you can expect and and um, some helpful tips there. Uh, they've got you know serious toolkits, a hundred day toolkit. You know after a diagnosis, what do I do as a parent um, or as an individual? So there's a bunch of toolkits. I provided this list um, to Rebecca. Um, Tracy actually put together this amazing list. And uh, it's all you got to do is click on the link and it takes you straight to it. So it really takes the hard work out if you're ever looking for something. Um, and you can always go on our website and that's what the, the picture there is and, uh, and find some and um, find some information about everything and anything. Um, it's kind of going down a rabbit hole sometimes on our website. <laughs> Although we have changed it a little bit um, because, you know, I hate to say it, we have a hard time finding information sometimes, which is not good. Um, so when you first log into autismspeaks.org, um, we have an, an option called My Guide, and you mm -hmm. basically, you know, would put in what age you are, what sort of resources you're looking for and then the website will really be customized to you so that right. the information you are looking for whether it's transition to adulthood or newly diagnosed all of that information you know filters up to the top as opposed to you know being on page seven of your search so we've really been working on trying to provide more personalized information for everyone uh, yeah, and I like that. So we also have an online resource guide. So if you don't really want to have to, you know, talk with someone, um, you can go on our online resource guide, pump in your zip code, and it'll give you all like different categories of whatever services that you could possibly be looking for, uh, which is really nice because sometimes all you want to do is find it on your own. <laughs> uh, we've got some, you know, up to date information about the COVID-19. Um, information and resources and you know evidence-based uh things that you can look at if you're interested and so i put this slide in there for everyone and then tracy is actually going going to go into this a little bit more but we have this really cool initiative about delivering jobs and we know that um you know people live with autism longer as an adult than they do as a child and so we want to make sure that we are make that we are providing um, meaningful employment to everyone and autism speaks along with best buddies and special olympics has we've teamed up to kind of get a bunch of companies who are already doing really great things to a table and making sure that information is being passed along and everyone is on the same page and what's working is working and what isn't working um, that everyone can talk about that but i'm gonna let tracy do a, a maybe a deeper dive great thanks jackie uh yeah i think this is one of the things i'm most proud about for um, our organization i have a child griffin who's 24 who is currently asleep, but if he wakes up, he will probably walk by behind me. He likes to Zoom bomb every call I'm on, which is totally fine. I, I love having him be front and center. Um, so if you see a six foot three, rather large boy walking across or turning all the lights on, that would be my <laughs> son Griffin. So he's a little off on his uh, timing skills at the moment. He doesn't sleep very much, um, but I think having, um, you know, walked with Griffin through this process. He was diagnosed when he was three, actually down in San Diego. So I have a huge affinity for the San Diego community. Um, and now he's 24. And so, you know, we've really looked at, okay, what does the rest of his life look like? And I think what's been so exciting is that there's all this momentum with regard to like diversity and inclusion and companies are really looking for ways that they can embrace, op, you know, thinking maybe a little bit differently so that um, we worked uh, with Disney, for example, 
So when they do their interviews, if you don't maintain eye contact, you don't make it to the next interview. Well, for a lot of people with autism, eye contact's incredibly difficult. So, you know, when we talk to them, it's like understanding that they may not make eye contact with you, but at least I know in my own personal experience, Griffin knows every single movie ever made by Disney, what the release date was, what the production babies were. I mean, he is a wealth of information and a great employee for a company like Disney. So I think it's working with um, companies to help them understand what does this look like and how do you think a little bit differently so that the workplace can be much more inclusive. And um, I think that, you know, of course we always wish, you know, this was already in place. Um, unfortunately, it's not. I, I think what's um, difficult sometimes is that, you know, Autism is a relatively new field compared to, you know, some of the other um, areas like cancer or epilepsy. So that there is still so much we don't know, and there is so much work to be done. So it's hard to kind of um, get all these things up and running. You know, we did a, a, a good job. Um, thank you, Jeff. <laughs> um, you know, I'm getting early intervention and services, and now's really the time to talk about what what the opportunities look like for adults, because we also want to make sure that it's not stereotypical, like not everyone is going to be in IT, right? I mean, that's just not, I know that's not my skill set, um, you know, and not everyone is verbal or nonverbal. So that there's this huge spectrum and really working with companies and the public to understand this whole spectrum and to really help, you know, think differently and make whatever accommodations might need to be, little tweaks sometimes may, need to be made to help really enrich their workforce. And I think, um, What's been so exciting when we're working uh, with these companies is that I think for a lot of them, they, it's this great untapped talent pool that they really had no idea was out there. And, you know, because they wouldn't be able to, a lot of people just really don't do well in the interview process. And so how can they change their interview process, you know, or if someone wasn't comfortable you know, working in an office, I hate to say this, the one positive thing about COVID is we all realize now we can work from home and that's okay. Um, you know, it's just thinking about things a little bit differently. So we're, we're really excited about this. We think every, every company is a bit unique. Um, you know, there's not like one, just like everyone on the spectrum, there's not like one, one size fits all. So we're really um, trying to work on the diversity and inclusion um, along with Best Buddies and Special Olympics to really make sure that there are pathways to more, more jobs and more opportunities. Wonderful. Unmute myself. All yeah. right, <laughs> we're gonna move on, next slide. Oh. There we go. So there are ways that you can be involved. You're, I'm sure you're asking, wow, what can I do to be involved? <laughs> and so um, we have walk events that you can volunteer at. We'd love to have volunteers out. Or if you're really interested in being like a walk or a team and fundraising for Autism Speaks, you can do that too. Um, this year, the San Diego event will be a virtual event, but Orange County was virtual last year. And so I have a picture of a, of a family um, who still wanted to get together uh, safely and a lot of them not in this picture but they wore masks and they walked in their local neighborhood and community and they were able to just um get you know get together this is a uh, team daniel alexander and it's for um a little boy and they celebrate him on that day and so i thought that was really fun um that they were still able to do that uh last year obviously everything was virtual so me and my husband walked in our neighborhood and we wore blue and we um you know shook our pom-poms and i think that's a even a better way to really bring um awareness which is a big initiative for autism speaks 
into your community by just going on a walk and everyone's like well why are they wearing blue what are those blue pom-poms and they google it and i'm sure autism speaks pops up because you know everybody knows um and so we also have a orange county walk takes place um this year november 13th at angel stadium uh, so if you're interested and you want to learn more you can follow the link on the website or um, you can reach out to me or tracy and we can uh, get you more information about what volunteering looks like um, anything from you know handing out t-shirts to handing out water bottles along the walk route um we feed our volunteers so that's always a good time uh, and uh, with some pastries and, and coffee and, and things like that and it's a really great day to see our mission in motion um it really you know once you've seen a walk you you understand why this mission is so important and uh and how many people in your own community are um are, are going through something you know, maybe just like you or something that you um, have passion for. And so that's really neat. Let's see what's my next slide. So this is just us thanking you for having us today. We really appreciate the opportunity to speak about Autism Speaks and, and the really great jobs that we're doing out in the community and the great people that we get to meet, including you guys. And, you know, any questions you guys have, we are here to answer or at least point you in the right direction for a good answer. <laughs> Thank you, Jackie and Tracy, both of you. We're just so grateful for you to be on today and go into depth a little bit more about Autism Speaks, what you're offering right now. It's during the pandemic um, and all of that. I'm going to stop sharing your screen, Jackie. Oh, cool, thanks. Um, I did wanna just take a moment to talk a little bit about what Autism Speaks does and what we don't do. Cause I, I think sometimes people um, there might be some misperceptions or, you know, understanding how this works. Um, Autism Speaks is one of the few um, charitable organizations that actually gives money back to other charitable organizations. Um, for example, the uh, impact grant that we gave to Autism Tree Project Foundation. What we know, so we operate definitely on a national level, but we also want to support the local initiatives. So we are not a direct service provider. Like you don't come to our offices, um, you know, for, for therapy or groups or, or any of that, because we know that there are amazing groups already in the community. So we don't want to duplicate any efforts because honestly, Dana and Rebecca do a way better job than I ever could. So we, we really want to support what it is that they're doing in the community. And so can our impact grants are really designed to increase capacity, whether it's trying out a new program or being able to um, expand a program to offer it to more people. Um, so that's really how we kind of interact. And then what we also do like during COVID, the first relief bills did not have people with disability in it. Kind of a big oversight by a lot of politicians. So Autism Speaks helps advocate for all um, the organizations on that national level to really make sure that just people with disabilities are included in all of these efforts. Because we know as much as you guys are doing, uh, Dana and Rebecca, if you have to add on federal legislation and advocacy, like that's a lot of work. So how do we work together smartly so that we're not duplicating efforts, that we're really expanding the reach as much as we humanly can. Um, one of the things that I'm also really proud of that we did um, at the beginning is, you know, there were less than 10 scientists working on autism like two decades ago. It was a really small pool of people. And so what we've done is we provide seed grants and we also help fund fellows to go into autism research. So now there's hundreds of scientists because uh, unfortunately the way the science community works is people don't just give you extra science money. You have to almost take it from someone else and you have to prove that this is a field that needs money and so we've really helped build that community up and we really look at um, supporting evidence-based uh, 
science research because we think that's really important because there's a lot of, um, I'm gonna try and say this politically correct. There's a lot of wild ideas out there sometimes. So we really want to make sure that, um, you know, everyone is safe and, you know, we know that people are trying to find, you know, like personally, I'm looking for a sleep study that will get my son up before 2 p.m. And not, and not be awake all night long. So that would be awesome for me. Um, you know, but we have a whole wide range of that so that we really try and work um, together with the local community to make sure, you know, I'm all about making sure we raise the water level for everyone. Like, let's not fight over the same pond of water. It's how do we make, how do we all work together to make sure that we're helping as many people as possible in a variety of different ways because, you know, we talk about across the spectrum and then throughout the lifespan. That's a lot of people to try and help and make happy. So we don't always do it right. I'll be the first one to admit it, but I appreciate that we really are, you know, trying to do the best job that we can and really help as much as we can to move this thing forward. Sorry if that was really preachy. Sorry about that. So <laughs> not at all. No, I think it's necessary to be said. And I like Tracy, this is the first, just so everyone knows, this is the first time that Dana and I have met Tracy. We had an amazing call with Jackie a couple of weeks ago or a couple months ago. And we're so thrilled to meet you, Tracy. And oh, thank you. Get get to know you a little bit better. And it's awesome that you're an autism mom and you you come from that background. And so I think that, that that's something that really resonates with you know us at Autism Tree. And we love to learn more about you know your son and you as a mom, your perspective. So how long have you been working for Autism Speaks now? Uh, so I actually started as a volunteer. Um, I started in 2002. Um, just for me personally, um, Griffin's diagnosis kind of came out of nowhere. He wasn't talking. Like, we just really didn't know what to do. And I'm not a trained ABA therapist. I'm not a lawyer. Like, there's a whole list of things I'm not. But I can, I can try and do something about it. So I actually started uh, the Los Angeles Walk uh, for the organization. And what I loved about it was it was just one of those days where I cry every time we have walk days, sorry, just ahead. <laughs> because it was the first time I actually felt like I wasn't really alone, that there were all these people there. And, you know, our friends came and they came to really celebrate Griffin because they don't really invite him to anything. So it was just this one day where it was this true celebration, not about what's missing or, you know, anything like that. It was about like, let's celebrate Griffin and what he does. And we're all in this together. Um, the first event, this was always my, my favorite saying, because we would, back then we were allowed to have like bounce houses before they became unsafe. Um, so we would have bounce houses. And like, if you're waiting in line and if your child was not flapping their hands, we got to stare at you. Because let's face it, we've all been in those, events, restaurants, whatever, where, you know, people look, and especially two decades ago, people didn't know a lot of this. So it was kind of new for people. So it was just that sense of someone else, you don't even have to say something, you just make eye contact and you know, like, you know, what's going on, whether it's the exact same situation or not, you know, that we're all in this together. And to me, that is so welcoming and overwhelming that anytime we can bring people together, you just feel, I feel more powerful. Like, okay, you know what? We're, we're going to change the world. So hmm. we feel the same way about our community and we've been so lucky to reach, you know, I know Autism Speaks is on a national level and now Autism Tree is starting to get to that point too, because we're online so much and that was a blessing from the pandemic and we're able to reach people like Jeff who's on this call today and he's in Massachusetts and wow. we have a whole East Coast, um, we have a lot of East Coast people who we love. Um, 
Dana and Todd lived there for two years and um, all those connections made are still alive. And Jeff, thanks for being so active in the chat today. I definitely want to give you a chance to speak, but I'm going to read what you're, you put in the comments. He said that found, I found that working from home can really help those with autism and neurodiverse abilities because they can work on their own schedule and be in their own surroundings. In fact, more people with disabilities have actually gotten jobs during the pandemic that were remote. I didn't know that, Jeff. That's really fascinating. And you have been traveling a lot too. So I'm sure you've been talking with a lot of people. Is that correct? Uh, yes, I have. And uh, I've actually done uh, two speaking engagements uh, in person so far this year. Um, both were in Florida. One was in Orlando back in March and, and just recently in uh, Tampa. So um, I do a lot of, um, I do a lot of traveling for, um, for like, you know, um, speaking engagements. And in addition, I also put um, my services um, in the chat wall as well um, on my webpage. Um, so if you guys ever want me to come out and help out with any event, um, whether it's in person or virtually, just, you know, just let me know all my contact information's on there. And you can also, um, and if, uh, and, and I, and I am, uh, I am uh, negotiable in terms of pricing as well. Great. Thank you. So. I love it. Jeff has grown so much as a self-advocate since we started, like just within the past year too. He's been on almost every single lunch and learn that we've had, um, which is amazing. So I wanted to give him a little love today, but I'm going to open it up to anybody else who wants to engage and has questions for Tracy and Jackie. Um, now is the time to <laughs> hear questions in the chat or say any comments that you'd like. <laughs> well, I know that um, I'll go ahead. I think that means that my presentation was on point. Definitely, <laughs> Definitely Jackie. It Thank is. you guys. <laughs> well, one of the things that we found really exciting that Dana and I both found exciting when talking to Jackie is learning about that work and autism at work employment initiative. Um, and I'm, we, we hosted an annual neuroscience conference that will be global this year um, because it will be virtual and that will be Friday, November 12th. I invite you, Jackie and Tracy to attend. Um, we're going to be doing an autism at work panel um, with people from Microsoft and Brazil, companies in Brazil. And it's um, our keynote speaker is from the UK, Dr. Simon Baron Cohen. It's Great. gonna be an amazing, um, virtual conference. So that's what something that Dana and I talk about every day is how we've been around for 18 years now. And our whole we've raised a whole generation of kids. And now all of them are graduating from high school, transitioning into college or a career. So we're on the same level of thinking this is definitely a need that mm -hmm. um, this community has. And it's nice to see so many large companies and organizations like yours are on the same wavelength um, that we are. So thanks for sharing about that autism initiative. Thank you. And I think um, one of the things that you'll start to see more from our organization is that we do these pathway events. Um, and it is uh, probably a little, a little similar in that we'll do, um, we'll have um, employers, we'll have employees, and then community partners, um, because we know that, um, like, us just telling someone what to do isn't going to work, right? Every company has their own culture, and then for a lot of people, they may need um, a job coach with them, so that it really takes all three parts kind of working together to make sure that there are successful opportunities um, for individuals um, for employment. Uh, I know one of our little bit longer term projects is to have a um, kind of, let's see if I can explain this, like a job database, kind of like Indeed, but for people on the spectrum. And the reason, it, we always kind of go back and forth. The reason why we want to have that available is that there are a lot of companies that are specifically looking for individuals on the spectrum for um, you know, either a pilot program um, or some of their initiatives. And it's really hard to find. It's very hard to get the information out when you send it you know, 
like one email at a time to people so that the idea behind this is that this is a bigger clearing house where we can connect people up the country with opportunities and you know with employers and employees so i think that's going to be really exciting yes that is i'm interested in a little bit of the specifics of the initiative too i don't know how much you know about it or can speak on it but how what's like the game plan of rolling it out um so we have um what we call now it's this so we have the delivering jobs, which was kind of this commitment by all three um, organizations, Best Buddies, Special Olympics, and Autism Speaks, to help create these pathways towards a million jobs. Um, so that's a little more, um, I don't know if esoteric is the right word, but it was you know not quite as tangible. So we have what we call workplace inclusion now, which we are going to companies and we have some digital trainings. All of our digital trainings were created by individuals on the spectrum so that it wasn't just someone sitting, you know, as much as I know Griffin, I don't know everything how his brain works, you know, like, so we wanted to make sure that we had a very good cross section of people so that things are, you know, visual or oral and, you know, how do we, um, make this so everyone feels included. So we have these digital trainings um, that companies can sign up for. And some of them are great just in, you know, they might be for the supervisor because they may not have never met someone with autism. So how do they manage that person? Um, we've heard, we had one person tell us that they were like, well, I'm just gonna expect the same thing I expect out of everyone. Well, that's fine, but they they didn't know why the employee's mom kept calling because you know they're like, no, we have to deal with the individual. But the mom's so used to managing everything and making sure you know that their child gets the services they young adult gets the services they need. So they were like, why is mom coming? Like, what is happening here? Um, so there's just interesting things that come up that I think there's this almost fear on the half of employers, like their heart is there, they want to do something, but they just, they don't want to make a mistake. They don't want to do the wrong thing, or they've tried a program, they brought something, someone in, and it's just not a good fit. Because then that really, that first time out of the gate leaves a bad taste in people's mouths. We really want to make sure that there's room to, to fail in some ways, because the best way you learn a lot of times is by making mistakes. So figuring out what works, what doesn't work, um, and really helping people um, manage that process. We also have trainings that help the coworkers, right? Because we want, if you're a part of a team, you wanna be part of a team. But if you have an individual that isn't, um, we have one guy that like hates, like he can't work with overhead lights. So he always wears a hat. Well, his coworkers would give him a hard time being like, dude, take your hat off. And he was like, no, I need my, like, I need it so that I can concentrate more. And these are my sensory issues. So I think there's just, you know, this level of awareness and helping people. It's not just about the job and your job description. There's so much more that goes on in a workplace. And how do you really manage that? Because, you know, they don't ever teach us that in school, right? How to manage the workplace. It's like, here's your technical skills and there you go. Oh, uh, Terrence, thanks for typing something in the chat. He said, I really love you're talking about Autism Speaks and some of the Olympics, the Special Olympics, which is good that you showed us. And I love your nice presentation, Jackie and Tracy, well done. <laughs> Thank you, Terrence. Terrence. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I love your background. That is so cool. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Why don't you tell us a little bit about how you're involved at Autism Tree, Terrence? You can share. Um, sure. Um, I'm a liaison spokesperson with a, a San Diego Symphony. Oh, wow. We have an amazing partnership um, with the San Diego Symphony. We started earlier this year, at the beginning of this year, called Meet the Instruments. I mean, yeah, so, sorry, Meet the Instruments series. That's what I mean. 
And Terrence is our resident San Diego Symphony expert <laughs> because he knows all the musicians, their names and every um, instrument that they play. And he is a musician as well. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes I, I'm a musician. I play a trombone. Wow. Yeah. He's very talented and he has perfect pitch. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That is impressive. I know. Um, so my son Griffin does not have a lot of words, but of his limited vocabulary, <laughs> no sing mommy is very high up on his list. So I, I imagine that my pitch is probably pretty bad. So <laughs> I'm very impressed, Terrence. Oh, thanks. I love when organic things um, happen uh, on Lunch and Learns. And I just saw that Cece typed in that you're involved with the Youth Symphony. Is that correct, Cece? Yeah. I love it. Well, I would love to see um, you and Terrence, if you guys would be open to it, going to a symphony event um, with Rebecca and I, and maybe um, one of our donors, we're working on that for Jackie and Tracy to know um, that that's something new and the symphony, it's brand new to them. And it's not something they're announcing it because the shell is so new um, that they're doing for some of their partnerships. And I think they've really, um, like Rebecca said, Terrence already knows everybody or a lot or feels like that. So they really um, appreciate um, the work that Terrence has done to bring the Meet the Instrument series to life in a very personal way from him as a musician. And Terrence also has a documentary about him. So um, that's something for Jackie and Tracy to know. I think everyone else knows that, but Terrence, what do you and Cece think about if we have tickets that we can go to the show one night? We can. Oh we yeah, can it was it was nice. Um, it was great. Yeah, I, I really like the, um, the Arady show. Yeah, Terrence the went. Arady shells is huge. Yeah, I know. We went to one of the opening nights with um, Terrence on July tenth last month. Yeah, oh, thank wow. you, Terrence, for reminding me. <laughs> Life yeah. is such a blur, but. Um, yeah, I think it's no accident, CC, that you brought that up. And I think that all um, go together. And then, you know, uh, Jeff, we've been working on getting tickets for when you're coming to town, just so you know. We just don't want you to be disappointed because this is all new. Because uh, Jeff is coming to town from Massachusetts, Tracy and Jackie, and he's helping us. And um, we're super grateful. He did an awesome job um, on our Living Autistically panel that we do, which is something, um, Tracy and Jackie, for you guys to know, we're always looking to, um, add new, um, inspirational people like Jeff and Terrence, who've both been on our Living Autistically panel, to the Neuroscience Conference. One of the guys, um, that's going to be on the panel this year, um, I think I mentioned on the pre-call, left, um, his mom, living with his mom uh, in Florida at age 69 and is pursuing his dream in Hollywood, which I noticed, I think there was something on your um, PowerPoint that's about industry, the entertainment industry um, coming together for jobs. And so um, Mark is his name and he's extraordinarily um, inspirational. He's following his dream to be an actor in Hollywood. He's driving Uber and um, he's written a book. So we had him on one of the Lunch and Learns we could share with you, but I do want everyone to know we like having um, Jeff and Terrence pretty much are like on our committee forever because they've already been on the panel and they help us find um, people to put on the panel too because we've been together for 62 weeks meeting new people. And this is the most, um, I think I mentioned on the pre-call, we've ever had uh, older adults that were diagnosed older. Like Mark was diagnosed, I believe in his fifties, Rebecca, is that correct? No. Yeah, and yeah, we've had people diagnosed much, much later in life and to see them um, pursuing their dreams and realizing Mark really wants to find love and he's 69 and he wants to go on that show, um, Finding Love on the Spectrum, they're looking at doing one in LA. So, you know, I think um, it's great that we're talking about it because we haven't um, completely made all of our, our decisions for the whole agenda for the conference. And that is actually go, gets approved. Um, everything gets approved by Dr. Motri, who's our chairman of our conference. And um, so anyway, I just, this is one thing, uh, Jackie and Tracy, that I love about the Lunch and Learn is we have this time 
to connect and have organic things happen like Cece, who we've seen on here before. Cece, and you're part of the foundation and I didn't know you were involved in the Junior Symphony. So that's, um, thank you for sharing that. And Terrence, isn't that great? Oh, yes. A new music friend. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't know if anyone has any comments on any of this. We welcome all of it. Um. I know that, thanks Jeff. I definitely want um, to know those people that you would like to be, have to be on a lunch and learn. That would be amazing. Please do send that to me. Um, well. I'd love to get to know your community too. Uh, Glenn, awesome, Glenn Lasker. Hi Glenn. He says, both your presentations were very informative. It's nice to know that Autism Speaks and Autism Tree Project Foundation can work together. I volunteered at Autism Speaks Walk Liberty Station five years ago, which was well done and very successful. Good job. <laughs> oh. That's actually how we met Glenn, huh? One of, um, one of our mutual friends said, oh, I have a friend who's involved with Autism Speaks and I want you to meet him. And then um, Glenn has just been a huge light to our community of families. Like, it's like, it's like if I, we have an event and Glenn isn't there, everyone's like, where's Glenn? Who's me? <laughs> It's true. What a good impact you're making, Glenn. Thank you well, for the kind great. words. <laughs> all the people I met at Autism Speaks and the people I've met at Autism Tree have uh, have changed my life for the better and stuff. Yeah. So, and uh, they help a lot of people, both organizations. So it's good to know that we can work together. No doubt, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for that, Glenn. Welcome. I, this is why Glenn is like, we need him in the mix. He always infuses this important special sauce. <laughs> Positivity and love. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I think we're at just about time. Um, this has been so much, so much fun. And to get to know you, Tracy, a little bit better. And Jackie, it's so great to see you again. Um, Hope we get to meet your son one of these days, Jackie. I mean, Tracy, sorry. No, no Griffin. problem. <laughs> Does Griffin have two Fs in his name? Yes. Is it G-R-I-F-F-I-N? Yes. Okay, got it. I love it. <laughs> um, I'd love to take a group picture of us all. Um, so now's the time to turn on your cameras and I'll take a screenshot, I'll do a little countdown. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> Well, thanks everyone for joining and we'll see you next week. <laughs> Bye. Thanks, take care, everyone. Have a good take rest care, of your guys. day. Yeah, everybody. Have a good one. Bye everyone.